ABC 7 speaking with the family of a man shot in the head, allegedly by an El Paso Border Patrol agent. Some of you not shy about telling us how you really feel about this story. And those who know the victims, though, say you're mean and you don't even know what you're talking about. That's our top story. Also, what story is making you gasp tonight and telling us on Facebook, oh my God, that is so scary. And another from Jackie saying, a tragic accident to witness. That's from Marsha. It's this, a camera happened to catch a plane crashing down. You'll see this incredible video coming up right now. Also, it is football signing day. A crushing blow to my ego as an NMSU Aggie, but some great news for the UTEP football team. One of the best players in Las Cruces. He's raising a pick tonight. Plus your shout outs for some other players on signing day. Also, where were you February 4th, 2011? Chances are you were trying to stay warm. One of the coldest days El Paso has ever seen. Tonight, the anniversary has you sharing your picks on our social media network, like Mauricio did. You're also sharing your stories. Nicole, what a day that was. Absolutely. And we want you to share your awesome weather pictures with us. I'm also tracking cold front. What does that mean for the rest of your work week? An answer in Storm Track Weather. This is ABC 7 at 9. Get ready. You become part of the day's news right now. Live, where news comes first. From the Mesilla Valley at Las Cruces to El Paso and the Borderland. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the El Paso Las Cruces CW. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. I'm Bob Harp. Nicole Gomez is our storm tracker, and tonight you are the social media aficionado. How's that one? Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, it's almost okay, up there with goddess, you're right? You're on to something here. I am. <laughs> this is the only newscast where you at home have a starring role. So get your laptops, your smartphones. We want to see you on the CW. Yes, we do. And let's go ahead and get to your top stories right now. The stories that you need need to know before joining the social media buzz happening right now. Okay, first up, 11-year Border Patrol veteran Alberto Montelongo, he sits behind bars tonight. He's charged with two counts of attempted murder. Now, Alberto Montelongo allegedly held his estranged wife and another man hostage during a standoff in Montana Vista Monday night. Jesus Rodriguez was shot in the head. Now, you need to know the affidavit that we got says Rodriguez remembers uh, Montelongo pulling a gun from his pants, then a flash and a loud bang. Rodriguez says that he crawled into a restroom and called 911 himself. That sparked a SWAT standoff that lasted several hours. And we spoke with Rodriguez's uncle today, who says his nephew's doing better despite a bullet wound in the head. Thank God he's, he's doing okay, uh, but that's all we know. Well, Angelica Parra, who was a Juarez police officer for 12 years before becoming a U.S. citizen in 03, was featured in this ABC7 story back in 2008. She's the estranged wife. Now, she is considered one of the best shots in the Border Patrol. That's when we did the story. Now, Mariana wants to clarify something for us tonight. Just want to point something out. She did not cheat. The story is totally different. This was not her fault. I know this for a fact. You might not believe what others are saying about this in our Facebook discussion underway right now. That's coming up in a few minutes. But first, you need to know that Edgardo Flores, his trial resumes tomorrow. Remember, Flores is accused of running a red light three years ago in East El Paso and crashing into a state trooper, Javier Aranya. Aranya was killed. Today, eye-opening testimony from a witness who says he saw the trooper run the red light, not Flores. Ivan tonight on our Facebook page telling us this, if he took the red light, let the kid walk. Manny chiming in with a personal connection to this. My cousin was a passenger of the accused and almost died in this crash. I hope no other lives are ruined by this incident. It seems like yesterday. Again, that trial continues tomorrow. You also need to know, three-time convicted robber Donald Newberry was executed just a few hours ago here in Texas. The 52-year-old who helped engineer the biggest prison break in state history. Well, the El Pasoan, George Rivas, who was part of the Texas 7, he was executed back in 2012. That was for the killing of a police officer during the prison break. You also need to know, these brothers are in jail, accused of robbing a man in northeast El Paso. 21-year-old Joshua Mendoza allegedly grabbed the victim as he got out of his car and demanded money. When the victim refused, Joshua allegedly told his 19-year-old brother Jacob to shoot. The man, though, was able to get away. No, 
Don't close the schools, that's what they were saying. Parents and students at Bell Elementary today protesting. Now that school is on the list of schools recommended to be shut down, but EPISD has not made any concrete plans to do that. You need to know the parents claim the district isn't giving them any information, but you might remember EPISD held a meeting at a nearby high school in November to talk about that. And also, you need to know that we've just posted a video clip on our Facebook page on both of them, and it may take your breath away. At least 25 people were killed this after a Trans-Asia flight crashed in Taiwan, and it was all caught on video. Take a look at this. Okay, these are the last seconds. Oh, wow of Trans-Asia Flight 235 clipping a bridge right before going down in a river. Dash cam video showing it clipping that bridge right before it plunged. Rescue crews managed to pull half of the people on board that plane to safety. Again, we posted the video on our Facebook pages, and that is where Peggy wrote, freaking scary and sad. And from Candace tonight, oh my God, so terrible. So scary, I agree. Well, you need to know what the traffic looks like tonight. Everything looks good. No problems. Our TxDOT traffic camera system showing Far East El Paso looks just fine tonight. Well, Nicole, we have so much to talk about tonight, but before we get to that, we need to know what the weather's like tonight. We do. The forecast looks great tonight, but I'm talking about some changes for tomorrow, so let's get straight to it. Our temperatures across the southwest, nice and comfortable, but notice around Oklahoma City, Amarillo, Lubbock, temperatures in the 20s you see there, 34 in Midland. That's that cold front that will make its way into our area. So we're expecting cooler temperatures tomorrow, but notice our clouds and radar picture here showing us a very nice evening, comfortable temperature throughout the area. Our highs today in El Paso, 72. 70 Las Cruces, T or C, 57 in Ruidoso. Currently close to 60 in El Paso. We're at 55 Las Cruces, 46 in Alamogordo. So it will be a pleasant night. That cold front will move into the area early tomorrow. I'll let you know what that means for the rest of your forecast, your temperatures for tomorrow. That's all coming up in Storm Track Weather. All right, Nicole, quite a few stories that are hot tonight on our social media network. One of them very sad, sparking a disturbing discussion. Frankly, I couldn't believe what some people were saying, but hey, we do want you to know at home, no matter what your opinion is, we want to hear about it. We do, Bob, but we do ask that everyone at home is to remain respectful of others throughout this time. Now, we're talking about the Border Patrol agent Alberto Montelegno in jail tonight. He's charged with two counts of attempted murder. The sheriff's office says he, was hel he held his estranged wife and another man hostage for hours and shot that man in the head. Well, Ariana, tonight in our Facebook discussion telling us this, this was on our KVIA.com page, so she's a typical cheating wife. Yuck. She should get charged. Again, I really was not expecting that one, Nicole. And then Juan saying, that's why you don't mess with another man's wife. Ashley saying, they may have been married, but what if they were in the middle of a divorce or separating? I don't think we should be so quick to judge. And Glenn telling us it's called divorce and move on. No one is worth it. And Lily tonight saying, crime of passion. He could get off easy. And Sabrina telling us he will get a smack on the hand. And Kathleen summing it up with this discussion, shame on them all. Well, no matter what you think, again, we do want to hear from you. This is the only newscast in the Borderland, Nicole, where folks at home actually become part of the news and help decide what we talk about. And you can connect with ABC 7's new newsroom and join our discussion on KVIA.com, our Facebook page, and news updates on Twitter at ABC 7 Breaking. Then see you on the CW by sharing your comments and photos on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All right, Nicole. God, why are you always picking on me? What are you talking about this time? Uh, this time, exactly. First, <laughs> you have to school me on some hip hop and the artist <laughs> on live television, and now you're just pouring salt in the open wound. I still don't follow you. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, Nicole, let me tell you. <laughs> and everybody at home, Nicole, you're a UTEP minor. I'm an NMSU Aggie, and your minors just took one of the best football players in New Mexico. All of us Aggie fans, we're kind of dumbfounded, but hey, at the same time, Nicole, I love your minors as well, so good for you. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. And Coach Sean Kugler says the future of UTEP football looks good. Uh, I think it's got the potential to be a great class, but we really won't know that until two or three years down the line. But if you look back at that first class, that was a very productive class. I think this class probably has more talent. Well, today was signing day, and here's a look at UTEP's local guys. Five of them, they are staying, and it, it does include the new quarterback, Kavika Johnson. All right, he led Mayfield to back-to-back -to -back state titles in New Mexico, and he even won the whole thing in 2013. 
and coach also says he has plans for T.J. McFarland, the El Dorado graduate, transferred over from the University of Texas. Now, Nicole, just like you, other minor fans are excited tonight. Irma Singh, it was nice watching you throughout your high school days now. You're a minor. Congratulations. Congratulations. And Josephine with Go KJ, we will be there to support you 100%. And Kavika, good choice though. Hey, in all, UTEP in 22 players today, 17 from high schools, uh, four junior college uh, players, and even one transfer. That was McFarland. Well, Coach Kugler, he wants to recruit at least one player from every El Paso high school. When all is said and done, today certainly helped. As for New Mexico State, all right, the Aggies did get one heck of a class. One of the better defensive players around is linebacker Shane Jackson out of Manville High School in Houston. And another big name going to the Aggies, tight end Jason Solbeck. All right, Nicole, listen up. We are talking about our alma mater here, Andrus High School. This is where wide receiver Rashad still, he is headed north to play in the Big Ten's Minnesota. Uh, he says he is looking forward to playing Ohio State and see how he matches up against them. Eastwood's Andrew Cole, he is heading to Tarleton State. His teammate Greg Long, he said, he's in the orange, said that he is going to stay home and he signed with UTEP. How about some Franklin action now? Over at that high school today, four players were signing, saying they wanted to be committed to certain schools. We know quarterback Baylor Romney is on his way to Nevada. Running back Nick Bingham is going to Texas State. And Del Valle quarterback Steven Montez, he signed to play with Colorado. Scout.com ranked him as the number 12 quarterback in the state of Texas. Hey, way to go, guys. Now, Nicole Montez, he is getting a lot of love on our Facebook page tonight. He is getting a lot of love tonight. Ralph saying, congratulations, make us proud, and even better, finish college before going pro. Jose telling him, wish you would have stayed. Best of luck. Represent 915 to the fullest. 915, got to represent. <laughs> and Frontier. Proud Del Valle athletes, wish you the best of luck, as do we. Okay, Nicole, you're a mom. This is right up your alley. Lego fans unite. Have you heard about this one? I haven't, but parents, grab those kids for this one. It's a Lego competition, and it's coming to El Paso. Had to put a little rock and roll there because the first competition is up at UTEP next month. First is actually an acronym for inspiration and recognition in science and technology robotics competitions just like this giving students real world engineering experience this is video we found on youtube from an event two years ago our teams of 10 elementary and middle school students they learn how to program a robot then use that robot to score game points in a game a really fun game too all right even better mom and dad the event is free and it's open to the public Ooh, you said free. So mark your calendars. <laughs> it's a Saturday, February 7th from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening. It's happening inside UTEP's Memorial Gym, and we posted a link to the video that shows you all about the LEGO First Challenge. Check out our Facebook pages. Feel free to let us know what you think about it. And some folks are already telling us, like Luciana commenting, this is something our boys would love. Well, Luciana, you better get those boys out to UTEP next month. And Jessica using our Facebook page for a shout-out to Roy Sr. Look, babe. We should take Roy. I'm assuming little Roy. He'll go crazy. Unless she was talking to little Roy about big Roy going crazy, right? Oh. Uh, I'm so glad we put the word out, though, because <laughs> a lot of people were talking back and forth to each other, saying, hey, we've got to check this out. So there's always something to do in El Paso. And another Nicole, uh, a story, Nicole, that folks are really chiming in about. We in the newsroom were today. But what is that story? It has people like Arthur tonight saying, yep, out of work for two days. Loved it. Alex with the other side of it, though. I worked morning till midnight because of it. And Johnny saying, El Paso lost a lot of palm trees those days. A moment of silence. Okay, they are all reflecting on what happened in the borderland four years ago. Your stories and your pictures of the deep freeze from 2011 still to come. I mean, really, look at today and what? Talk about the other end of the spectrum, Nicole. Well, we're not expecting a deep freeze tomorrow, but I am tracking some changes. A cold front is headed our way. I'll talk about those details in your full storm track weather forecast. All right, Nicole. This is ABC 7 at 9 on the CW. You need all this news before joining the social media buzz. We'll be right back.